I had met a guy named R. Buckminster Fuller, a guy who invented the geodesic dome and all that. And so all through my life, I studied Bucky Fuller, you know, and he got to me. He says, what does God want you to do? And he got to me, if you know what I mean. And I said, well, we don't teach money at school. And I think I do understand about money now. And with that point, I started to teach entrepreneurship for free in Hawaii because I wasn't doing it for me this time. I was doing it for what Fuller called the universe, to give back, give back your gift. That teaching in Hawaii wound up to be rich dad, poor dad. Our schools teach us not to make mistakes. And what Fuller says, we learn by mistakes. Like a baby can't learn to walk unless they fall down. So the reason many people fail in life is because they're a feel of failing. And I was just teaching games via, I mean, I was teaching via games, encouraging people to make mistakes and how to learn from your mistakes. So that was the process. So I, it wasn't about me getting smarter, making them smarter. It was basically teaching them how to make mistakes and get the principle. So my, my biggest lessons was learning from people I thought were smarter than me, like the accountants and the attorneys. And they turned out to be crooks. Well, the reason the rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income earned, portfolio, passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income because I'm working for it. If I buy, a, if I buy a, let's say, Apple for $10 and I send it for 20, that's uh, portfolio income, capital gains. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never taxed. So it's not, you know, so what these guys are screaming right now in America, tax the rich, I said, good luck. Because most of the guys complaining, they don't know the three kinds of income. And the rich don't have jobs anyway. They have assets. And so the average schmo out there, a poor guy, you know, sent the kid to school. They don't learn this. Debt is a four-letter word for most people. There are many people in my position, so-called financial gurus, who say live totally debt-free. And there's other people who say cut up your credit cards. And, you know, that's good advice for certain types of people. So you should definitely cut up your credit cards if you don't know, you can't control your spending. And the other thing about debt, there's good debt and bad debt. And if you are only have bad debt, which I classify student loan debt as bad debt, the main reason it's bad debt is because it's the worst possible type of debt. You see, if I get into trouble as a businessman with debt, I can declare bankruptcy and I'm clean. But the trouble with student loan debt, you can't do that. You know, it hangs around your neck for the rest of your life. So if you're a student, you shouldn't take on student loan debt unless you absolutely 100% guaranteed that you will commit to graduating. Everybody can do the same thing I do because the tax laws are for everybody. You know, we don't say, well, the tax laws are only for the rich. No, the tax laws are for everybody to use if you have the right financial education. And the reason I'm an advocate of financial education, without that education, you have to pay taxes. You see, very few people will buy what I do, make a million dollars and pay zero tax. That takes, and my rich dad taught me that playing Monopoly. That's how it started. You know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. McDonald's is in the real estate business. So they sell hamburgers, but they buy real estate. So they pay no taxes. Taxes are incentives. The reason I get tax breaks for real estate is because I provide housing. I get tax breaks for providing jobs. I get tax breaks for providing oil. And I get tax breaks for providing food. But me, but most people see me as a crook. I, I'm not. The U.S. government wants me to provide housing, wants me to provide jobs, wants me to borrow money because that's how money is created through debt and to provide oil and food. I get huge tax break. Everybody can do the same thing if they had the financial education to do it. If people understood the tax code, we'd be more prosperous. So in the macro world, what happens is when there's a thing called quantitative easing or money printing, what that does cause, it causes inflation in the monetary system. In other words, real estate and stocks go up in price. But what it does, it screws the poor people. When I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one at Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs. We acquire real estate. I don't invest in the stock market. Okay. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, and how much I pay in taxes. 
And because I'm an entrepreneur as well as an investor in real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, I immediately invest it in real estate. I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate. I get four million from the bank. That's why I love banks. Because when you print, savers get creamed and people who work for money get creamed. When they print, debtors get rich. You see, debt and taxes make the rich richer. And debt and taxes make the poor middle class poorer. The trouble with printing of money is we're going into a depression. So please hear that. We're going into a depression. And so when they have quantitative easing, they're trying to prevent a depression. And the trouble with printing money historically is when you print it, there was a short burst of inflation. And we're, such a, we're in such this period right now. You know, we all say prices are up, stock prices are up, and all that's good. But it's only short-lived, and then it slides back down into depression. So they're trying to stop a depression. And it's called the transmission of money. So it's like I've given four gears to a car. When they print money, they're trying to prevent the depression. But we're going into a depression anyway, because it doesn't fix it. And the problem with that, when you print money, it only makes investors richer. But the working class guys, the guys who work in my yard, I feel, you know, they're getting screwed left and right because they're working for money. That was Rich Dad's rule number one, don't work for money, because money is corrupt. The only reason the economy expands is we have to have debt. And that's, that started in 1971, when Nixon put the dollar up the gold standard. And that's not working. When I came out of school, I think the debt to GDP ratio was only like 20 to 1, 20%. Today it's 140%. We're bankrupt. I, I know most people know this, but if they keep printing money, the inflation is short-lived, but it's only in people who can get debt. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.